Hey guys, welcome. My name is Mitch Comstet. I'm the family pastor here at Rocky Mountain Christian Church. So if you get an email um, from a Mitch Comstet, this is the guy that is sending you those emails. So just so you know, and if you're not receiving my emails and you would like to, um, I'm sending them to families. But if you're not receiving them, you can go online at rmcc.org and click on story. You'll be able to get it there. A couple weeks ago, we started a brand new thing called The Story. And, this, and the story is walking through the entire Bible for the entire year with the entire church. Everyone in every age group gets to go through, has the opportunity to go through the same thing at the same time. How awesome is that? Is that awesome? I, I hope you guys have been enjoying it and loving it and uh, uh, get really getting into being a part of it. Well, a couple weeks ago, two weeks ago, in fact, we started the story, and we started it at the beginning, which is a great place to start, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and then he separated the water from each other, and there was, a, there was sky and water on the ground, and then the water began to recede, and there was land, and out of the land came up vegetation, and then after that, God created the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, and then he created animals to walk along the ground, and then finally, we get to the crown of his creation, which is Adam and Eve, humanity, us created in the likeness of God, and uh, does anyone know what Adam said the first time he saw Eve, you know, he, he went to sleep, and they took out her, took, God took out his rib, created Eve. Anyone know? He woke up, said, whoa, man, and that's the origin of woman. Okay, I, it's kind of, that's a dumb joke. Um, he, he, he you're, you're a bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. You shall be called, whoa, man, and uh, that, was the, that was the beginning there, and it, God comes to Adam and Eve, and he says, he says, look, I want you to rule the world, rule over the world and rule over the animals. I'm giving it all to you to take care of. And this is like heaven on earth. And he said, we want you to be fruitful and multiply. And then, but there's one thing you cannot do. Do not eat of the tree that's in the middle of the garden. You, this is heaven on earth. Perfection at its finest. Two chapters later, Genesis chapter 3. Eve is tempted by the serpent. Serpent comes to, to, to Eve and says, Hey, you're not going to die if you eat this fruit. You know, God, he's, a, he's just lying to you. So what does she do? Help me out. She eats it. And then she takes some fruit and she goes over to her husband and gives some, gives some fruit to him. And then he eats it. And if you've ever wondered why is there so much evil and sin and abuse and scandal and debauchery and all these things in this world, it all sends back to this one moment in time when evil entered the world, when they chose to go their own way instead of God's way. Years later, <clears throat> generation after generation after generation after generation passed and things did not get better. In fact, things got increasingly worse and worse and God looked over the whole world and all he saw was violence and corruption and people mistreating one another all over the place. And he saw, he, but he did see one man who was righteous and blameless. Who was that man? Noah. He comes, he looks over the entire world and he sees Noah and he says, you know what? We're going to start over. I'm going to flood the world, but I'm going to save Noah. And God goes to Noah, and he says, Noah, build me an ark. And Noah says, what's an ark? God says, I will give you the blueprints that you need to build the ark. Okay. And he starts walking away, and he, God says, Noah, I want you to get two kinds of every animal and seven pairs of certain animals, and bring them to the ark. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, if I were, if I were Noah in that moment, I'd be thinking, God, this is, this is impossible. First of all, I don't know what an ark is. Secondly, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of good builder guy, but you should really get Steve, my next door neighbor, 
He's just really good at building things. He'll be more efficient. He'll get it done faster. Like, just ask Steve, okay? Uh, no, um, you know, this is an impossible task. There's no way I can do this. This isn't fair. But he does. He, that actually never crosses his mind. He builds the ark. The animals come. The, the rain falls. The waters rise. And the world is completely flooded. Save this one ark with two of every kind of animal, seven pairs of certain kinds of animals. Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their wives. Forty days later, they come, uh, they, they run aground. They actually get, get off the boat. And what does God send as a symbol to say, I will never flood the world again? A rainbow, a rainbow across the sky. And a lot of people think that this is the very, very first time. Scholars think, say, this is the very first time that a rainbow was ever given, ever shown in the world. Kind of cool. They get off the boat, and another kind of cool concept, cool thing to think about is, we are all related to Noah somehow. Isn't that weird? We're all related to one another. And we all stem all the way back from the time of Noah. Noah's like our super, 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 great, 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 grandfather. That's kind of a cool thought. They get off, and generations later, it's Noah and his family, and they begin to repopulate the earth. We come to another guy named Abram, who we talked about last week. And God comes to Abram, and he says, Abram, I want you to leave your country, and I want you to leave your relatives. And I want you to go to a land that I will show you, some undisclosed location. Just start walking, and I'll tell you when you get there. Again, I don't know about you. Let's say, God, this doesn't make sense. I like my fa- most of my family. Like, I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave them. You know, send Lot. We don't get along very well. And he's like, he's going too. Lot's, Lot's, Lot's going with you. Okay, Abraham, well, just send Steve. Let Steve go. Like, God. Um, okay, that was a dumb joke too. Um, Since Steve, no, okay. So Abraham, Abraham, uh, he doesn't even think that he believes in God and he follows God, and goes. Years later, God goes to Abraham now again, and he says, Abraham, you are going to have a son, and you will be made into a great nation. And he probably is like. Look at my wife, and I mean, look at me. We're old, okay? I know she looks 29, but she's 80, all right? Um, she is old. I am old. You know, we're, we're, there's no way we're going to have a child. There's no way we're going to have it. This is impossible. This doesn't make sense. Why now? But a year later, or when he was 100 years old, he ends up having a son named... Isaac, yes. He has a son named Isaac, and Isaac has twin boys named Jacob and Esau. And then Jacob has 12 boys, and one of them, his name is Joseph, and he's going to be the center of our story moving forward But for this, for this morning. Um, but before we get to his story, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever looked at a situation in your life, maybe one this past week, and you thought, it is, this situation is not fair. God, this isn't fair. God, this seems impossible to overcome. I do not know how it's going to happen. God, this doesn't make sense. God, what good can come from what is happening to me right now? You know what? Mo, uh, Noah could have easily asked those questions. Abraham could have easily asked those questions. And Joseph definitely had every right to ask those kinds of questions. But instead of telling you the story, we want to show you the story here in a moment. Um, Do we have any kindergartners through fifth graders in here? Can I hear? Can I hear you? Can I hear you, kindergartners through fifth graders? Woo! Okay, can I get a woot woot? Woot woot. Okay, there you are. All right, I know you're here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, So... The past couple weeks, we've been showing them Lego Bible time. And you may have heard the annoying song that they came home singing, Lego Bible time. But we want to show you, because it's a United Sunday, we thought what would be pretty cool is to show you a segment that we show every week with your kids. Uh, And we did some voiceovers and other stuff to it. So um, without further ado, do you know what time it is? Lego Bible time. Check it out.
know what time it is? Think about it, son. Moses and Joseph and Noah and Legos. Think about it, son. God and David and Jesus and Legos. Think about it, son. This is the story of Joseph. Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. Man, look at my coat. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Joseph's brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them. They hated Joseph and could not speak a friendly word to him. Why doesn't daddy love us? Come on, Richard. Stop crying. I have a plan. When his brothers went to graze their father's flock at Shechem, Jacob said to Joseph, Your brothers are grazing the flock at Shechem. Go and see if all is well with your brothers and the flock, and then tell me how they're doing. So Joseph went to see his brothers, and they saw him in the distance. Before he came close to them, they conspired to kill him. Hey, come on, guys. Let's kill him and throw him into one of these wells, they said to one another. And we will say a wild animal has devoured him. Hey, shed no blood, Reuben said to them. Throw him into the well into the desert, but lay no hand on him. When Joseph reached his brothers, they stripped him of his coat, the coat of many colors which he was wearing. Yeah, guys, come on, let's get him, let's get him, let's get him. Grab his shoes, I want the LA gear light. Come on, grab his gold chain. We're going to check the cat. I got the gold. They took him and threw him into a well. Yeah, wait, wait, yeah, I don't have health insurance. Oh! They took Joseph's coat, slaughtered a goat, and dip the coat in its blood. Dude, that is gross. I ain't touching his innards. They sent the coat of many colors to their father and said, Hey, Dad! Hey, Dad! We found this! Can you come examine it and tell us whether or not it's your son's coat? He recognized it and said, It is my son's coat. A wild animal has devoured him. Joseph is surely torn into pieces. The brothers decided to sell their brother Joseph to the Ishmaelites, who then brought Joseph to Egypt. Hey Joseph, check out the song I downloaded on my iPod. Sell us your horses. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, the Egyptian, one of Pharaoh's officials and the captain of the guard, had bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered, and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household, and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. Oh yeah, I'm in charge. Don't be sipping on that haterade. Booyah! Now Joseph was well built and handsome. Mm-hmm, I'm fine. Girl, look at that Lego. I work out. Potiphar's wife took notice of Joseph and asked if she could kiss him. Oh no, girl, you tripping. I ain't like that. But he refused. He said, How can I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? Though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to kiss her or even be with her. Joseph, come back. You know I will do anything for love. But I won't do that. One day he went into the house to attend to his duties, and none of the household servants was inside. She caught him by his cloak and said, Kiss me! Kiss me! Never let go, Jack! But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. Oh, goodness! I got one man's cloak in my hand and my husband's coming home. What shall I do? Mama said there'll be days like this. Ah! God! God! Come here! When she saw that he had left the tunic in her hands as he ran out, she called her servants and said to them, Hebrew. He came up here acting like a fool with his pants on the ground. He came in to kiss me, but I screamed. And when he heard me scream, he left his garment beside me and he went out the house. She kept the tunic by her until his master came home. Then she told him the same tale. When his master heard his wife say, Potiphar, get over here. This is how your slave treated me? He became furious. Joseph's master had him arrested and committed to the jail where the king's prisoners were kept. Oh man, it's hard up in here for a Lego. Here we go again. But while Joseph was there in prison, the Lord was with him, 
He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. And two years later, he found favor in the eyes of Pharaoh and was released from prison. All right, you guys like that? Yeah, there's, there's actually like almost all of the Bible stories are on the Brick Testament. That's what it's called. And we just did the voiceovers, but you can literally find like the whole Bible in Lego story if you're ever interested. It's pretty entertaining, especially when you have Mitch and Ben doing voiceovers to him. But I mean, guys, I'm really excited to be here today. Uh, like, like I said earlier, I'm the student pastor out here at uh, the Frederick campus, and I'm really excited that I get to come talk to you today. The story of Joseph which is what Mitch introduced for us. It's one of my favorite stories in the Bible, maybe probably my favorite story of the Old Testament, and I'm really excited that I get to be here and, and, and share that with you guys. Before we get started here, I want to I ask you guys a question, or, or at least see if, if your mind thinks like mine. Now, when you guys, like, hear somebody say, like, you know, like, I'm struggling with this, or if you, if you see somebody trip and fall on their face and hurt themselves, do you guys laugh? Yeah? Do you? I mean, I mean... We kind of have this like pain scale, don't we? Where, where like when people like fall down and hurt themselves, or or when when uh, somebody tells us like what they're going through, we kind of judge them like, oh, your pain is probably like a five, you know, it's pain, but it's not that much, or you know, you're like a two, you need to just get over it. But I mean, like I'm, I'm a youth minister, so sometimes like I hear these stories of of middle school, high school girls, and you know they just come and they're like, man, I. My boyfriend just broke up with me. You know, I mean, I, I thought we were—I thought he was the one, and you know, we've been dating for forever. And I'm like, well, well that, that's, that's hard. How long have you been dating? They're like, oh, like just a long time. We've been dating for like two weeks. I'm like, oh, you know, it might, maybe that hurt a little bit, but two weeks? Come on, or you, you know, you know, like a little physical pain. I, I think it's funny. Sometimes I call the kids in to sit down when we're going to start Amplify or Thrive, and and we have our chairs in there, and they're not as nice as these chairs. They're more plastic chairs, and some of the screws are missing. So sometimes when, 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 you know, the students go down to sit on them, the, the bottom of the chair just, like, falls off, and then they, like, fall through the chair, which my first reaction is to laugh and kind of point fingers and make fun of them. But then, like, I'm doing that, and I'm like, maybe I should see if they're okay. And I'm like, no, they're, they're, not, they're not in pain. I'll, it's okay to laugh. I mean, we do that, don't we? I mean, yeah, we do that in kind of silly situations, but in serious situations when people are telling us what the, they're going through, I mean, we kind of judge and say, yeah, that hurts, but you're only a six, you know, you're, you're only a seven. But the interesting thing is, the interesting thing about that pain scale is that, that when we're going through pain, when, when we're going through a difficult time in our life, we don't use that scale on ourselves. We don't, we don't say, yeah, I'm hurting, but it's not that bad. When we're in pain, we're in pain, and it's a ten. It doesn't matter if people say it's a two. It doesn't matter if people say it's a six. We're in pain, and we just want it to stop. We don't like pain. We don't like suffering. We don't like trials. It's so unnatural to us. And, and it's hard. And guys, I know, I know, I know in a room this size, we've, we've all experienced some kind of pain. We've all experienced some kind of, of suffering. And, and we might try to avoid it. We might try to do things in our life, you know, to, to, to not get into pain. But ultimately, we can't. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, like, I used to walk around and I would stub my toes, like, on the ground or... Or, or like going around a corner, and like I thought that was the worst pain ever. Like I thought like stubbing your toe is like as bad as life gets. Like that was that's like the pits. But I mean, quickly I realized it's not. But that, that's what I thought. But what I did was I started trying to learn how to avoid that pain. You know, like maybe if I pick my feet up a little more, maybe if I watch as I go around corners, I won't run into them. And and I learned how to avoid it. But even though I avoided that pain, I encountered other pains. And it's something we can't avoid. And guys, I know in a room this size, there's some of you that woke up this morning and your first thought was, God, I don't know if I can do one more day. God, I don't know, I don't know how, to, how to get through this day. God, I need you. God, when will you let this end? God, when, when will you let this storm pass? God, will you help me? I know that there's some of you that are struggling today to go through that. And guys, I, I wish I could say, here's, here, here's X, Y, Z. Here's, here's the steps you do to get through it. Here's, here's how it's going to make it all better. I wish I could say, here's the answers to, to, to your questions. I wish I could tell you why, why, why uh, good people die young and, and, and bad people live prosperous lives. But I don't know. I don't fully understand God's plan. Because what, 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 I, what I want to accomplish today 
isn't to give you answers to that, but I want you to, what I want to accomplish today is to give you hope. Hope that, that if we cling on to God, if we, if, if, we, if we keep following God, that he will bring us through. Not that it's going to be easy, not that, not that we're going to wake up one day and it's all going to be better, but, but we have hope that's only found in him. That's what I hope to accomplish today. Guys, because we're all going to encounter pain at some time, whether you're in it now or whether it's going to be in the future. I don't know what you're going to go through. I don't know what you're going through now, but I know that it's going to come. I remember the first time I encountered a, a pain in my life, like not just like a stubbing of the toe, but like, like a serious pain. I remember vividly the first time. It was, I was in third grade. It was uh, November 14th, 1997. I was, I was coming home from, from school. And it was going pretty good. I was just walking down the street, and, and, and I just remember walking in, and, and I remember opening the door and stepping in. And just instantly, instantly I knew something was going to go wrong. Instantly I knew, I knew, knew from that point, like, things were going to change. When I opened the door, I, I saw my mom sitting on a chair crying, and I, I saw my, my dad standing behind her on the phone crying, and I knew at that moment, like, something was going to happen. You see, my dad had been sick for, for the past couple of months, and the doctor said it was... You know, it was, it was asthma, it was, it was, uh, it was bronchitis, and they, they, they didn't know, but, but that day they, they figured out what it was. He had, he, had, he had cancer, and they diagnosed him that day, and they gave him three months to live. Guys, I, I can't tell you what that's like. I can't, I can't tell you what, what it's like to watch your dad die in third grade. The doctors accurate, were pretty accurate. Three months to the day, he passed away. And guys, guys, that's hard. That's hard, but, but see, the thing is, my story is not unique. My details might be unique, my, 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 my exact story might be unique, but ultimately, all of us have been through something like that. Ultimately, I don't have to explain that kind of pain to you because you've been there. We've all been through something like that, and it's not easy. No matter how hard we avoid it, no matter, no matter what we do, pain just inconveniently enters our life. And have you guys been there? I mean, it's rough. We're, we're, we saw, you know, kind of comically this story of, of, of Joseph. But, but on a more serious note, let's put ourselves in his shoes for a second. Because if anybody was struggling with it, it had to be him. I mean, he's just, he's just going through life, right? I mean, he's just, he's just minding his business. He's, he's his father's favorite. And all of a sudden, his brothers hate him. Hate him enough that they want to kill him. And ultimately, they, they get talked out of, but they, they, they fake his death and then... then he gets sold into slavery. He wasn't doing anything wrong. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't ask for that. He just was minding into his business, and all of a sudden, his life's flipped upside down. He's ripped away from his family, and he's sold into slavery. You know, things, things start getting better, though, eventually, right? You know, he's, he's put over all of Potiphar's house. But then what happens? He, he actually blatantly does what God would want him to do. He, he, he follows God and does exactly what he should do. Exactly what he should do. And he gets framed for something that he didn't do and gets thrown in jail. I mean, guys, that's rough. Have you guys, have you guys been in that place? I mean, then, then even when he's in jail, once he's in jail, he, he meets these friends. And these, these weren't in, in, the, in the clip that we watched, but he meets these friends. And, and they start having these dreams. And he goes to Joseph and says, man, I'm having these weird dreams. And Joseph's like, I can answer those. And he says, you know, your dream, you're going to die. Sorry to be you. And then, then he looks at the other guy and he, he says, you're going to get released and you're going to be reinstated to your position in Pharaoh's house. And, and Joseph said this one thing, when you get to Pharaoh, remember me. When, when, when you get put back in your place, remember me. Tell him about me. But what happens? He again gets forgotten and left in jail. At some time in our life, things just don't go right. Sometimes in our life, no matter what we do, no matter if we're honoring God, the, the storms, the, 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 the things in our life just keep getting turned upside down. But what I want to look at here is, is what did Joseph do in those times? Because I think we can learn something from him. You know, Joseph, Joseph is um, sold into slavery. What, what did he do when he gets to Potiphar's house? He, he put his head down and he worked. He, he, he hung on to God, and he kept pushing through it. You know, things go wrong there, and he gets thrown in jail, and it, he keeps working harder. He doesn't give up, even, even though he's in jail, even though he, he's stripped again away from everything he knows, he keeps working harder. 
Guys, that's the first thing. That's the first thing I want you to know from this story is if you're going through a hard time, when, when those storms do come, if you're not there, is keep pushing forward. Guys, hang on to God. That's what Joseph did. And, and this isn't in our text, but, but I have to imagine. I have to imagine there were nights when he was in jail. There were nights when he was in slavery, just ripped away from everything he had ever known that he had to question God. Uh, if I can read a little bit into this passage today, I have to imagine there were nights where he said, God, why are you letting this happen to me? God, why did you take me away from my family? God, why, why did you let me go to jail? God, I tried to honor you. God, why are you letting this happen to me? I have to imagine there were times like that. Yes, have you been there? I mean, have you been in that spot where you're like, God, why did you let me lose my job? God, why are you letting those kids make fun of me? God, why won't anyone sit with me at, at, in the calf? God, why did you let him die? God, why? Why? Guys, it's hard. It's not easy to keep pushing through. It's not easy to hold on to God, but that's what we get from Joseph. Is even in the toughest times, we need to push on and we need to hold on to God. And this is, this is one thing I need you guys to hear too. Throughout, throughout this passage, there's one phrase that keeps being repeated. There's one phrase that, that, that this passage keeps saying, and it says, and God was with him. When Joseph was sold into slavery, it says, and God was with him. When, when, when he's thrown into jail after honoring God, it says, and God was with him. God never left him. God never let him go through it alone, and God is never going to let you go through it alone. God's always with you even on the nights where it feels like he's so far away, even on the days when you wake up, you know, I don't know how to do this anymore. God is with you. He's right there beside you, and he's never going to leave you. Guys, it's not easy. It's, it's, it's not easy to, to, to push through. It's not easy to always hang on to God. It's not easy, but I promise you, God is with you. He's with you through whatever you're going through, what, whatever you've been through, and whatever you will go through, he's right there with you. And, you know, we get a little bit further on in the story, right? I mean, at the end of the video, it was kind of uh, queued up that, that eventually he gets released. I mean, Joseph, Joseph is eventually released. And, you know, we've been talking about this, this upper story and this lower story in here a lot. You know, the, the lower story is our day-to-day -day life. You know, that's, that's where Joseph is getting sold into slavery. That's where Joseph is struggling to get through the days. But there's also an upper story, and that's God's overarching picture of the Bible. That's, that's, that's the overarching picture of our life. And, and Joseph gets this unique opportunity to step from the lower up story and see God's bigger picture. See, see Joseph is, is, is brought into Pharaoh's house, and Pharaoh's having these weird dreams. And, and, and finally, his, his friend from jail remembers, like, oh, I know, I know a guy. I know a guy that can help you with those dreams. And so he brings, he brings Joseph in. And Joseph... Joseph answers his dreams, and, and it, it comes that there's going to be a huge famine in the land, and there's not going to be enough food. And Joseph's like, your dream is telling you that you need to prepare for food. So Joseph, Joseph uh, or Pharaoh takes Joseph's advice and prepares food so, so that they're not affected. But you see, the same land where his family was living in was also affected by a famine. And his own family didn't have enough food to eat. And, and Joseph was able to offer his family food. Joseph was able to sustain his family. Joseph was able to step into this upper story and see that had he not gone through all that, God wouldn't have worked it out. And guys, I need you, I need you to hear this, that, that I, don't, I don't know what you're going through. I don't, I don't know each of your stories, but God can turn the darkest of times you're in. God can turn whatever you're going through into something beautiful. God can get, turn Joseph's life from, from slave to, to, to prisoner. He turned that into something that allowed him to save his family, that allowed his, his family to grow into the, the great nation of Israel. God can turn your mess. God can turn, turn whatever storm, whatever, whatever pain you have into your life, he can turn that into something beautiful. It's not going to be easy, but he can do that. And guys, I want to I end with this story. This is a couple years ago, three or four summers ago. I was going through a rough time in my life. I was, uh, I don't have time to go through, through all of it, but, but I was going through this, this, this time in my life where, where in the course of a couple months, I, I had lost my job, my girlfriend broke up with me, and then I found out I wasn't going to be able to go back to school uh, that semester in college, and I didn't know where I was. I didn't know what to do. I was, I was just lost. I was saying, God, why are you letting this happen to me? God, I was, I'm trying to honor you with my life. God, why would you let this happen to me? 
And, and it was that night I went over to one of my good friends and mentor's house, and he just asked me, he said, Curtis, how are you doing? I said, I'm, I'm not doing very good. I'm struggling. I don't, I don't know how to get through this. And he, he gave me advice that I'll never forget. He said, Curtis, I don't know why you're going through this. I don't, I don't, I don't know why God is letting this happen to you. I, I, I can't answer those questions for you, but, but I can tell you two things. First off, if you hang on to God, he's going to bring you through. If, if you put your hope in him, I promise you he's going to bring you through. It's not going to be easy, but if you hang on to him, he's going to bring you through. And then he said this. He said, Curtis, what you do with your life now, that writes your story of your life. What, what you do in the situation, good or bad, that writes your story. It's like you can write a bad story. You can, you can go off and, 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 and go into the, to things to, to help ease the pain, to, to, to deal with it the way the world deals with it. But you're going to write a bad story. He said, or, or you can hang on to God and you can push through it. And you can, you can put your hope in him, and I promise you he'll take you through, and you'll write a good story that way. And he looked me dead in the eye, and he said, Curtis, I hope you write a good story. Guys, I've, I've been affected by that advice more than any other advice I think I've ever been given. It wasn't easy. It wasn't like things got better right then. It took a while. But I was able to, to hang on to God, and I didn't always get it right. I made mistakes but I was able to hang on to God and he brought me through. And I have no doubt, no matter what I come to in my life, that God will bring me through. It might not be easy, it definitely won't be fun, but, but I know that God will bring me through anything that comes into my life. Guys, I hope in your life, no matter what you go through, guys, I hope you'll write a good story. Let's pray. Dear God, we, uh, we just thank you for, for being able to come here and just, just fellowship, God, and, and just to, to love on each other and, and to support one another, God. I just pray for everyone in this room that, God, we can cling to you in the tough times, God, that, that we can cling to you, God. I pray that you give us the strength to write a good story, God, that you give us the, the, the wisdom to know what to do. God, I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.